Okay. Okay. Yeah, whenever you're ready, start, please. Okay, I'm uh, I'm entering the station. So, um, hello. Hi. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, good morning. Uh, I'm the. Uh, my name is Dr. Heyman. I'm the surgical SO uh, working for Mr. X at uh, X Hospital. So I'm calling to speak to the hepatobiliary surgeon, Dr. Archibald Rose. To yeah, I'm Abdullah. To... I'm one of the registr one of the registrars in the unit. How can I help? Oh, thanks for taking the call. And uh, do you have time for me to? Is it the right time uh, to speak uh, to you? Of course. Please go on. Please go on. Of course. Yes, this is about a patient uh, who has underwent a lab interval cholecystectomy. Yeah. He and she is on uh, post op J4 and has uh, developed a picture like a bile leakage. And uh, right now she has uh, increased uh, vital parameters uh, uh, like increased uh, tachycardia and uh, dehydration. And then his. Uh, uh, And uh, we have some, uh, the patient is tachycardic, pyrexic, and uh, slightly jaundiced. I know he, she's having abdominal pain, and his blood uh, blood sweat taken, and it's showing increased uh, WBCs and CRP. So we think that, uh, and the abdominal ultrasound is showing some free intrablum collection, and we think that this patient uh, is having a bile leakage, and we are probably hoping to transfer patient dear specialist care for definitive treatment. Doctor, I'm to be honest, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused with what you just said. So, so you're calling me about a patient with bile leakage? Yes, sir, certainly. How did you reach this conclusion? You, I understand that she's post-operative day four, and but how did you reach that the conclusion that the patient has bile leakage? Oh. So uh, we have this patient uh, who underwent uh, cholecystectomy, and she had there is no uh, event in the surgery, but she has developed uh, pain over his abdomen, and he's now uh, looking toxic, and uh, there is generalized uh, abdominal pain, and the the ultrasound is showing some free fluid in the abdomen, and uh, since the patient has underwent four days back, and we are thinking of. Could be some due to bile leakage. Okay, but did you, do an, did you do an ERCP to know that? Uh, I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, uh, it is not done. It's some technical issues, and I have to ask my consultant for that. We have. So what do you mean? What do you mean it's ERCP. not done? You did try and get it, or are you calling us to get an ERCP done? Uh, I'm very sorry, sir. The ERCP is not done because of some uh, staff shortage, and uh, uh, it's not done. Okay. Also, about the CRP, how how high are the CRP on the white blood cells? Uh, the CRP is 50, and I'm when sorry, sir. I... Is that from today? Uh, it was done yesterday. Yesterday, and you're calling me today. Yes. Twenty-four hours later, you're calling me. Uh, I'm sorry, I do not have uh, this information, and I'm just uh, being informed uh, about this case. And uh, I, I will read. I will go and recheck the value whether it's been done today, and I'll get back to you once I am off the phone. Okay. Do you think the patient has an ongoing infection as well? Is the patient septic? Uh, yes, it could be a possibility. It could be a possibility uh, because patient is toxic and uh, uh, she has generalized abdominal pain and uh, she's tachycardic. And I do not know about the uh, temperature of the patient. Did you send uh, any cultures for the patient? I do not have this information, sir. Sorry, I will I will recheck it and I will get back to you. What is that? What do you think of the cause of this presentation then? So, sir, if there is a bile leakage, if there is a bile leakage, patient may land up in uh, biliary peritonitis, and she will develop the septic shock, uh, as well as a multi-organ followed by multi-organ dysfunction failure. All right. So you're thinking that this is purely biliary and peritonitis. Does the patient have a drain in? 
Uh, I do not have this information, sir. I'll I'll recheck whether the patient is having drain and how much, and I recheck everything about the drain and how much is being collected and color of the drain and everything, and get back to you. Okay. Do you think it's urgent, um, or you can delay this until you sort out your um, the staffing yeah. and your speed? Yes, my consultant uh, thinks this is urgent and uh, uh, since the patient is having toxic symptoms now and uh, if we can uh, send this patient to your expertise care. OK, well, fine. We, we're happy to accept the patient, but this patient needs a lot of workup before they come to us. Can you tell me what's your management plan as soon as you get over the phone? As soon as I, yes, sir. As soon as I go, I'll start uh, managing the patient uh, by ABCD protocol. Uh, since the patient is, uh, I'm concerned of the patient because he's critically ill. So I'll, once I check the patency of the airway and I'll start uh, uh, high, high flow oxygen and I'll start the sepsis 6 protocol. Since the patient is ongoing sepsis, I'll give high flow oxygen, uh, fluids, and I'll take the blood culture uh, and also lactate. And I'll put an uh, urinary catheterization and monitor the urinary output, and then I'll start antibiotics according to the local policy. And 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 I'll keep uh, monitoring the patient. Then I'll get back to you. You mentioned ERSP earlier. Can you tell me what does it stand for? Uh, it stands for endoscopic retrograde cholangiopathic graphic. OK, and what does it include? So it includes, uh, so we are uh, passing a catheter uh, to the uh, duct, bile duct, and uh, through the ample of water, and we are injecting a dye, and we are monitoring in a screen so that uh, we will know the anatomy of the pancreatic duct and the common bile duct, as well as the hepatic right. ducts. I'm happy for to transfer to transfer this patient. Who do you need to arrange this with? Yes, I, yeah, I'll uh, call the bed. Man. I'll, uh, I'll, I myself will accompany the patient, uh, and if possible, I'll get an ITU colleague or an anesthetic colleague with me. Okay, fine. All right. Can you tell me what is biliary peritonitis? It's but uh, just a, in, uh, inflammation of the peritoneum uh, by the uh, by the biliary contents and uh, by the uh, organisms present in the biliary fluids, uh, which may lead to uh, shock, septic shock. Okay. So currently there might be no beds uh, in the hospital. So how would you proceed if there are no beds in the hospital? I will continue continuously monitor the patient in emergency and I will call the bed managers to check with any patient can be reparitated or can be transferred. And okay. uh, till then I'll continue to ma uh, manage the patient. The record. All right. Perfect. Uh, well done, Hammond. That that was really good. Uh, you've answered quite well. I like I like I like I like you that very much this time than the last time. You're very very confident, uh, very calm. When you don't know the answer, you say that you don't know the answer. Uh, there are just a few things to change, and I'm going to tell you the most important thing to change. All right. Yes, the most okay. important thing to change is the S bar approach that you did. Okay. okay. Like okay. I said, we agreed at the beginning. I'm going to be harsh on my feedback. Don't get this hard. Yes, sure, sure. You know what I mean? Like just uh, just try to we're trying to improve you, right? So yes, basically, sir. basically in your S bar approach, and I'm gonna give you many examples here, you start by the highlight, all right? You don't start by the situation is basically your highlight. Okay. okay. So if you're gonna summarize this case, okay. Um to your um to, to the registrar you're gonna say hello i'm calling you about the post-operative day four post laparoscopic cholecystectomy day four 
with query boundary leakage and it started to be hemodynamically unstable. Right? Tachycardia, okay. hypotensive, and so on. So, uh, we don't let's, we, no need to tell about that uh, interval cholecystectomy, all these things. Can you say again? Do, do we have to tell in a situation about the, we do not want to tell about the cholecystectomy or anything, just the biliary leakage and the hemodynamically unstable. Yeah. Would that be so okay? You're recording okay. post operative day four with biliary leakage and um, uh, started to be hemodynamically unstable. All right. So okay. think about it. What's your specialty, by the way? You're, you're a general surgeon, aren't you? No, sir, I'm not orthopedician. Orthopedician, okay. So I'm calling you now. I'm calling you now as an orthopedician about a patient overnight. And I'm, I'm starting the consultation. Listen to that, okay? Hi, doctor. Okay. I'm calling you about um, a 33-year-old male patient who was never under us four days ago with abdominal pain and a chest pain as well after having a head trauma. Um, he was on the road and uh, he was tra traveling over like 30 miles. Mm, and then uh, he hit the car and then he, this and this happened. He had multiple fractures in his body, a uh, fracture included in his hip and his arm and also in his, uh, in his uh, tibia and fibula on the right side. You're bored already, right? This is yes, so boring. Yes. You did, you're not, I, I told you about of unnecessary things. The same patient, the same patient, and I'm calling you and saying, hi, Dr. Hammonds, I'm calling you about a 33-year-old polytrauma with query compartment syndrome on the right cuff. Okay. So when I okay. say that, you, you will start listening to me, okay? You will be interested to hear about that. You will be, if you're asleep, if you're asleep and I'm calling you in the middle of the night, this will wake you up. Okay, okay when I call you, I'm calling you about the compartment yeah. syndrome on the right side. When you wake up and start listening, all right, so this patient, he's 33, he was under us two days ago with polytrauma. He actually has a chest trauma and he has a chest drain in. He has a spinal fracture as well and he has a collar in situ and his GCS is 14 under the neurosurgeons as well. And also he had abdominal pain and he had a laparoscopic um, a splenectomy or, you know, he had a, a splenectomy uh, um, uh, yesterday as well. I'm calling you now because he has a, and so on and so forth. So in the background, you can do whatever you want. But in the first thing that you say, it's extremely crucial to say the highlight, all right? So the highlight here, yep. four to five, female, post-operative day four after cholecystectomy lab done laparoscopically, I'm worried about bio-leakage and is hemodynamically unstable. So she's day four or day two or whatever under this consultant. As per the operation note, it went unremarkable. There wasn't any problem. The key point here, they put two clips on the common bile duct and two clips on the cystic artery. And there was a drain in situ. There was a drain in situ and the plan was to remove in a few days. On my assessment, she's hemodynamically unstable or starting to be shocked. Um, uh, she's tachycardic, pyrexic, slightly jaundiced, with generalized abdominal pain, an ultrasound showing intra-abdominal fluid, with high inflammatory markers, including white blood cells and CRP. This is a new assessment. Okay. Based on that, okay. I think this patient has bile leakage and requires urgent transfer to your center to get an ERCP and further exploration if needed. You're giving a recommendation as well, right? ERCP and further exploration if needed. We don't have an ERCP at this stage. Okay. After mentioning okay. all of this, it's going to ask you what is the CRP. You're going to say, you're going to start, don't wait for them to ask you a follow up question. You can say, unfortunately, as I can see from here, the results from yesterday is 50. It hasn't been repeated, and I will be repeating it as soon as we come over the phone. So you're being very honest and you're mentioning you're aware of what's going on. You're aware of the mistakes, all right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and then what do you think is the cause? You need to widen the options a little bit. You, you, you can say, given the context that she had a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, complaining of abdominal pain, was intra-abdominal fluid, and worsening inflammatory markers, leakage would be the top of my list. Uh, but the leakage can come from the liver bed 
from the cystic artery, from the uh, uh, the duct as well, or the common bile duct injury or accessory cystic duct. Okay, is it urgent? Yes, of course, it is absolutely urgent. The patient needs an urgent transfer. What's your management plan? I'll plan to do this and this and this. I think you've answered this question very well, actually. You said you're going to go do sepsis, sex, and so on. That was very good. Um, uh, what does ERSP stand for? You've explained it very well. Biliary peritonitis, it's inflammation of the peritoneum due to leakage from the biliary tree. I think you've answered the others quite well. All right. Does it make sense, Hamath? Okay. I think it, you've done yes, very yes, well, very apart well. from the SPAR approach. Yeah? Yeah, I got, I got it. I got it. That uh, situation, how to tell us the situation. Yeah, so thank you. So, so make your highlight. I gave you I gave you the compartment syndrome scenario as an example so that you will be able to feel that. So I, I know you're quite senior. You have like, like six years, do you? Yes, I have. Six years of experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure that you have juniors. Yes. So when juniors call you, well, you will need actually to teach them that you start by the main point. You don't say things that I'm not really interested in at the beginning. Main points, and then go on and give me further details all right okay okay, okay so, yes perfect so so we've done three communication now we're almost uh one hour and 15 minutes uh, do you want to take a break okay. and then come back to do some history yes sir, sure yeah can we take yeah. five minutes break yeah yes sir thank you yeah thank you